Hi, everybody, and welcome to week seven. We're going to talk about neurovascular alterations, including Alzheimer's disease, multiple sclerosis, uh, Parkinson's disease, and post-acute stroke. Let's get started. An overview. Um, you can read most of this, but it's the most common type of dementia or cause of dementia. Um, in individuals 65 or older. Um, 5 million Americans are said to have Alzheimer's disease. Excuse me. And it's the sixth leading cause of death in the United States. The pathophysiology, um, early onset, under 65, and familiar or sporadic. Familiar Alzheimer's disease could be linked to a rare gene while sporadic Alzheimer's disease is more common and not attributed to genetics. Late onset after 65, that's yeah, usually 90% of the cases, uh, results into or in degenerative changes in neuron death uh, throughout the brain, initially affecting memory-related regions. Uh, we're not quite sure what causes Alzheimer's disease, but it's thought to be genetics, maybe environmental, and some lifestyle factors. Uh, cholinergic hypothesis suggests uh, low acetylcholine production in the brain. The amyloid and tau uh, hypothesis have been prominently focusing on amyloid plaques. And then ongoing research explores protein misfolding. A few non-modifiable non risk factors include age, um, sex, it happens more in women, family history, and genetics. Um, cardiovascular risk factors like diabetes, obesity, hypertension could lead to it all, or, or be associated with Alzheimer's disease. Um, lifestyle factors like smoking, uh, traumatic brain injuries could be linked, and depression uh, is both a symptom and of and a risk factor for Alzheimer's disease. Uh, certain medications like benzos um, or antihistamines could cause cognitive deterioration. Prevention, um, adopting a healthy lifestyle, cognitive activities like reading, puzzling, um, and other learning or learning new skills could uh, build up a cognitive resistance or re resilience. Let's see. And you can read that bottom one. So the nursing process, the goal is to provide safe patient care or provide safe environment that's supportive and support the family members. Um, utilize the following organizations and follow current practice standards. The assessment includes all of these, um, physical status, cognition, um, conduct health history, mental status exam, and a physical exam, evaluate height, weight, and vital signs. And remember the dementia acronym to assess for conditions that are can mimic dementia. And you can look that up. Assess functional status and decline in activity and daily living. Um, assess behavior changes and evaluate caregiver needs. Caregiver burden is a big one. Diagnoses. Nursing diagnosis includes uh, in cognit cognitive impairment, injury risk, inadequate health maintenance, self-care difficulties, and a big one that's going to be impaired memory, along with all these others. Planning includes uh, identify desired patient outcomes, formulate steps to achieve the goals. The main goal is patient safety, utilizing memory aids, assisting with ADLs, reducing anxiety. Uh, consider caregiver and family needs, especially respite care is needed. Some implementations, there's a lot of them. Um, Follow the PLST 
intervention model for environment, envi environmental modifications and check that out. Promote family and patient safety and psychological or physiological well-being. Educate on health behaviors and exercise. And then I'll let you read through the rest of these. Okay, next slide. Evaluation. <clears throat> Evaluate the patient's outcomes based on the disease process or the disease stage. Uh, focus on wellness. Assist caregivers' ability to manage the, the disease and meet their own needs. Anticipate outcomes include uh, maintaining independent functioning, safety, treatment, or treatment adherence, and caregiver self-care, and modify the care plan as needed. All right, next topic, multiple sclerosis, exemplar 13D. So it's an immune-mediated central nervous system disorder. Um, the immune system or cells attack the myelin sheath around the nerve cells, interfering with transmission of nervous signals. Um, diagnosis for this is challenging. Um, symptoms often go into remission after diagnosis. Manifestations may or vary according to area affected. Uh, there's no two patients that have the same set of symptoms. Um, may manifest as common to other diseases. Um, may be persistent, go into remission, or become exacerbated. Uh, true exacerbations of this last longer or last at least 24 hours. And then you can see proximal, uh, proximal attacks um, last under 24. Relapses may be triggered by stress, fatigue, infection, increased body temperature. Some common signs here. Um, fatigue is a big one. Per Paresthesia, uh, lack of coordination and balance, unsteady gait, tremor, bowel, bladder, bladder, bowel and bladder dysfunction, visual disturbances, dizziness, pain, and a few other things. Muscle specificity. So there's really no single test to diagnose MS. Um, medical history, physical exam, and several diagnostic tests are used, like an MRI, lumbar puncture, evoked potential test, and blood tests. The mainstay of treatment is pharmacological uh, therapy. So, some medications are not approved for pro progressive forms of MS. Other medications are specific for symptoms, like corticosteroid therapy, monitor for glucose intolerance, osteoporosis, and cataracts, and muscle relaxants. Some non pharmacological therapies. Um, physical, occupational, and speech therapy. Uh, maintaining healthy lifestyle is essential. Um, plenty of rest, avoid excess heat, balanced diet, adequate hydration. The nursing process um, that MS diagnosis affects physical, emotional, and cognitive aspects of patient's life, constrain relationships. Um, Nurses play a crucial role in patient care, uh, monitor disease progression, treatment effectiveness, and functional status. Nurses can also provide emotional and physical support, educate patients on the disease. That begins with observation and health history, observe gait, posture, and independence. Um, health history includes symptom details, medical history, family history of MS, um, and environmental exposures. Assess the impact of symptoms on a daily life. And recurring assessment tracks symptoms progression. 
physical exam, uh, mobility affects balance, coordination, hygiene, and speech. Um, use the dis disability scales, like the expanded disability status scale. Consider MS functional composite scale, so look those up. Assess for depression and suicidal ideation. That's kind of a big one, big safety issue. Some nursing diagnosis include incontinence, uh, compromised mobility, constipation, fatigue, self-care difficulties, uh, hopelessness is a big one, body image is issues, sexual dysfunction, um, and among a couple other things. Planning or goals, uh, develop patient-centered goals. Um, goals could include maintaining mobility, uh, managing incontinence, preventing constipation, reducing fatigue, promoting independence with activities of daily living, providing psychological counseling, adapting to symptoms, etc. Implementation, and there's quite a few of them. Facilitate home safety assessments, <clears throat> provide safety education, body mechanics and fall prevention, and I'll let you read off of these lists here. Yeah, I can't recall what the last one on the right bottom says. Prevent complications like something. I'm sure that will be in my PowerPoint that I post. A few more. Um, I'll let you look at these evaluations next. Continuously evaluate and revise the care plan as needed. Remember, in the evaluation phase, you want to see how your implementations work. If they don't quite work, then you need to revise the care plan. Assess for disease exacerbation and progress, and I'll let you look at the rest of these. Before we go on to Parkinson's disease. Exemplar 13F, Parkinson. Here's an overview. A progressive degenerative neurological condition that primarily affects movement. Uh, it's often characterized by tremors. That's the biggest one starts with unilateral hand tremors, progressive to bilateral, unilateral being one, bilateral being two. Progressives to, okay, muscle rigidity, slow movement, postural instability. Yeah. Motor symptoms. Let's see, um, often begins unilaterally, like I said. Okay, you can kind of already cover that. Uh, pill rolling motion with the thumb fingers. Uh, tremor increases as the disease progresses. Rigidity, uh, resistance, resistance to movement due to involuntary contractions. Muscles remain contracted when they should relax. Cogwheel rigidity refers to short, jerky movements of the arms. Postural instability, stooped posture, kind of like I'm doing now. Um, falls, and you can look at the rest of that. Freezing on the first step or when pivoting. Um, bradykinesia, slow movement, affects both voluntary and automatic movements. And I'll let you look at all that. Non-motor symptoms, uh, so few cognitive def deficits like slowed thinking, confusion or memory loss, um, emotional changes like depression, fear, anxiety, uh, sleep problems, insomnia, daytime sleeping attacks, restless, restless, restless leg syndrome. That's a mouthful. Parkinsonism. Um, not everyone who has Parkinsonism has Parkinson's disease. This can re result in or from medication, some kind of head trauma, 
or other neurodegenerative disorders. Patients with tremor, bradykinesia, rigidity do not respond to dopaminergic drugs like carbidopa, levodopa. So there's a few diagnostic tests here. And then we're going to go on to pharmacologic here in a second. So pharmacologic therapies include levodopa, increases dopamine levels in the brain, which is a big thing, effective at reducing tremors, bradykinesia, and rigidity. May not relieve balance or non-motor symptoms, though. Effectiveness diminishes over time. And I'll let you read that. A few non-pharmacologic therapies, um, exercise programs, walking, strength training, Tai Chi, yoga, physical therapy, exercise would be the most important one. Let's talk about the nursing process. You've heard this uh, term a lot. Um, so nurses play a crucial role in evaluating progression. They monitor the patient's abilities to perform ADLs, ambulate independently. Nurses assess changes in symptoms, medication effectiveness, and new patient concerns. Uh, documentation of this information is vital for current and future patients. Assessment includes obs observation and patient interviews. Observe gait, movement, tremor, presence, and severity. Uh, conduct general health history. Um, perform Parkinson's, Parkinson disease specific health history. Um, investigate non-motor symptoms such as cognitive de deficits, emotional changes, sleep patterns. Physical exam, uh, use the UPDRS that covers a variety of things like mentation, a behavior and mood assessment, activities of daily living, motor exercise or motor examinations, um, complications assessment, and then look at these scales and look them up because you might need to know what they are. Diagnosis, patient or nursing diagnosis, um, falls, compromised mobility, inability to feed self, risk for dehydration. Planning or goals, um, prevent injury involving the six minute walk test score, participate in physical and occupational therapy, uh, using bladder training techniques, uh, using techniques to overcome freezing and augment memory, and you can read that last one. Implementation, um, early strategies to maintain mobility and ADLs independently are crucial. Um, encourage daily walking, um, assistive devices as needed. And you can read these other three. Implementation, uh, promote independence. Um, we can read the rest of these. Evaluation. Regularly assess patients using that particular scale and monitor medication effectiveness and side effects. Assess emotional well being. Um, evaluate adherence to therapies and assess social support systems and refer patients to resources as needed. All right, so post acute stroke overview. And we threw this in because Akini wants us to uh, do that. Okay, so stroke is an abrupt event with decreased blood flow to the brain causing neurological deficits. There's a few types, ischemic stroke, which is a clot or vascular narrowing, and hemorrhagic stroke, which is a, a blood stroke, or bleeding stroke, vascular rupture. 
Stroke is the fourth leading cause of death. In the United States, high risk factors include hypertension, heart disease, diabetes, sleep apnea, and smoking. Bet you could have guessed that one. Pathophysiology. Um, the brain accounts for 20% of the oxygen consumption, but only 2% of the body weight. So it needs a lot of oxygen. Cerebral blood flow is controlled by autoregulation. Uh, interruption of blood flow leads to glucose depletion, sodium, potassium pump failure, swelling, and cellular death. Ischemic stroke are, includes some of these. And I'll let you read this. To repeat. Risk factors. Uh, hypertension is a big leading cause. Um, other risk factors, heart disease, diabetes, sleep apnea, high cholesterol, smoking, substance abuse, and a bunch of other things. Um, some factors are specific to females, like hormonal con contraceptive usage, pregnancy, childbirth, menopause. Ethnicity plays a role with racial disparities and stroke risk. Prevention, controlling blood pressure, quitting smoking, controlling diabetes, medications like antiplatelet drugs and anti coagulants may be prescribed, public awareness of and recognition of stroke warning signs, look at the FAST scale, warning signs, sudden weakness, numbness in the face, arms, or legs, usually on just one side, sudden confusion, difficulty speaking, sudden trouble walking, uh, sudden difficulty with vision in one or both eyes, and severe headache without a cause that's known. The nursing process includes uh, observe and interview the patient and the family for signs of stroke and risk factors, conduct a physical assessment, including level of consciousness, motor strength, coordination, cranial nerve function, vital signs, all this other stuff. Uh, some nursing diagnosis includes inadequate cerebral perfusion, tissue perfusion, compromised physical mobility, self-care deficits, and then a few other ones. I'll let you read. Planning. Um, maintaining blood pressure within prescribed levels. Ensure patient understands the importance of cardiac rehabilitation. Uh, plan for ambula ambulation and increased activity. And encourage participation in therapies. Implementation. So maintaining cerebral perfusion. You can look at all of these here. I don't think I need to read them to you. And I'll give you a few seconds. Uh, promote physical mobility, um, turn the patient every two hours if they're in the hospital, encourage activity, active and passive range of motion. Promote self-care, and I'll let you read these. Okay. Promote verbal communication. Be patient and be patient and face the patient when speaking. Speak slowly and use short, simple statements. Promote urinary and bladder elimination, and you can read these. Maintaining safety. Uh, monitor results of swallowing studies. That's a big one. We don't want them to aspirate. Have suction equipment available. 
and I'll let you read the rest of these before we go on to evaluation, which is our last slide. And the evaluation assess the patient's participation in therapies and the effective communication. Ensure involvement of significant others and family in care. And then I'll let you read the other two. And that's it, everybody. So read all of your assigned reading, watch this before class, and we'll talk about case studies on all of these. All right, see you later.